Sisters and brothers, we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to our Mass for third Sunday of Advent. Um, I know you're probably thinking right now, Father looked good in pink, and you can be forgiven for thinking that, <laughs> but it's actually rose. That's right. Thank you, Swift. <laughs> At least they say it's rose. I don't know what the difference is. Father Harrison, do you know the difference? What is it? A little more red. A little more red. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Third Sunday of Advent, uh, they always say the purple of Advent, this kind of penitential and preparation season, mixing with the white, the joy of Easter. It's a little bit of a moment of joy uh, in this penitential season, a, a little reminder that the light of Christ, even in the dark times, is with us, filling us with joy. Uh, and so we can't get too down. We have to remember to rejoice as Christians. That's one of the fundamental things that our faith is about. We are a people of joy as Pope Francis likes to remind us. As we get, begin our liturgy today, uh, we remember uh, a number of intentions for this Mass. Uh, birthday greetings to Hilda Denise Diaz Hall, Mr. Carlos Diaz, Thanksgiving to St. Jude for Philippa Bailey, Thanksgiving to St. Anthony by Gilbert Harris, the repose of the soul of Sergio Cobb, the repose of the soul of Gilda Gloria Diaz on her third anniversary in loving memory of Julian Castillo and Ad, uh, Alberto Pariente, in loving memory of Margaret Lucas who died one year ago, requested by the Barber family. Of course, we also continue to pray for our country during this time of pandemic. I, I, I know we had a, a, a tragedy yesterday, those two young when doctors who have been treating patients died. So we continue to pray for healing, uh, for God's guidance. We pray for their families. We pray for all of our frontline healthcare workers who are really on the front line of this thing and exposed every day to risk. With all these intentions in mind, we call to mind our sinfulness, trusting in God's healing and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. 
like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. The Sponsorial Psalm. The response, my soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. Response, my soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. Response, my soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. Response, my soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely spirit, soul, and body, be preserved, blameless, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it. He admitted, I am not the Christ. So they said to him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, no, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, 
Who are you so that we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make the straight path for the Lord, as, the, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across from the Jordan when John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, during my first uh, really few weeks of being a priest, <laughs> I was assigned to our church down in New Orleans, Immaculate Conception, uh, downtown New Orleans, right across from the French Quarter. I've mentioned it a few times before in homilies. Uh, and this part of New Orleans, if you've ever been there before, if you've ever seen it on TV before, it's filled with tourists. I mean, every, maybe not so much these days because of COVID, but in general, 365 days a year, there are people out and around having a drink or two, having some food. And, and some of them, as, as, as providence would have it, end up stumbling into our, pre, into our church from time to time. We had a lot of confessions there. And uh, on any given day, someone might come in who hadn't been in a church for a while. And uh, I remember one fella came in. Uh, while I was on duty in the confessional and, and told me that he had not been in a church in 39 years. He had not been in a Catholic church in 39 years. He was raised a Catholic, but when he was in his 20s, something happened, and I won't tell you because of the seal of confession, but something happened when he was about 20 years old, and, uh, and, he, and, he, and he felt terrible about what had happened. And so we went in to find a, a priest. He, he had been raised a Catholic and went to Mass and everything, but this thing happened. So we went and found a priest for confession and told the priest what had happened. And unfortunately, maybe the priest was just having a bad day, he kind of railed up against him and, and, and told him that this was a terrible thing that he should not have done. And the young man, then 20 years old, left and never stepped foot back in a Catholic church for the next 39 years until he found his way into our church 39 years later. 39 years because of, of one word, because of a few wrong words at the wrong time in his life. Power of, of a word or two. I have an, a, a friend who um, was also raised Catholic, and uh, she, she went every Sunday to Mass with her family. It was an important thing for her. And uh, then she got to college, and like a lot of young people, when she got to college, she started drifting away. Mass was boring. She was interested in dating and all the things you do in college. Studying, studying, I'm sure. Some people do that in college. Um, and, uh, and so she just kind of drifted away from church. And then she ran into a rough spot in her junior year of college, or sophomore year, I think it was. And, and things, she had, was a, in a bad relationship that started falling apart and, 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 and feeling homesick and, and, and getting some bad grades and everything just started falling apart. And she was walking by the Catholic church on campus or near to campus of her university and she decided to stop in and they were having confessions that very day. And she went in and saw the priest and the priest said to her, don't worry, you are forgiven, you are loved, nothing you can do is ever going to keep you from being a beloved daughter of God. She said she walked out of that confessional that day and she just felt like she was walking on cloud. Her whole being was light. And to this day, she has never missed another Sunday Mass, 10 years later or so. The power of words, sisters and brothers, one or two words to bring new life or to bring death. And it's not just for us priests. Lord knows sometimes people come up to me and they say, Father, you said X to me five years ago, eight years ago, and it really helped me that day. I, I don't remember what I said at all. I'm sure for every one of those, there's, there's somebody out there thinking, boy, he said that, and it set me back a while. Uh, we never know. But our words are important, sisters and brothers. They can either bring people into friendship with God or push them apart. 
Um, we call this third Sunday of Advent Gaudete. It's a Latin word that means rejoice, be joyful. The word is found in every, except for the gospel, it's found in every one of our readings today. Uh, 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 the first reading from Isaiah, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. The responsorial psalm is Mary's Magnificat. My soul rejoices in God my Savior for the great things he's done in my life. Uh, or the second reading, beautiful St. Paul to the Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks, and do not quench the spirit. Third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete, the Sunday of joy. St. Paul says in that reading from Thessalonians, be joyful no matter what. Christians should be people who don't quench the spirit and who are always living in a spirit of gratitude. And I'm sorry to report, church, that sometimes us priests and even all of us, this church, we can be people who do quench the spirit. We can be like that first priest. Maybe we're just having a, ba a bad day, but we can be our own worst enemies. Uh, we can be people who say the wrong things and quench the spirit. We can turn faith into a thing that is a weapon that's used to hit each other over the head with instead of something that brings us freedom and joy in life. Uh, we can spend our time complaining about this world and how it's going to hell in a handbasket and how everything is going wrong and this next generation is nothing but crud. <laughs> and it's a wonder why young people don't want to come to church anymore. Jesus says, I have come to life. I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. He does not say, I have come so that you might be miserable and so that you might make other people miserable too. No, I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. So joy it is, sisters and brothers. Uh, it is one of the most fundamental <laughs> Christian attitudes. Uh, we have to be on fire with God's mercy and compassion and tender love. We can't let even those bad days that we have the cold water uh, of our hearts dows out that fire. Um, otherwise, we will, we should not be surprised to look out and see people not going to church anymore and, and us losing another generation. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, but Father, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We are in the middle of a suffering, a time of great suffering in our world. Uh, people are dying, they are sick, they're out of work, they're hungry. We've had hurricanes and floods come through the country. I was out in Cayo on Friday, and they're still slowly trying to recover from that th those two hurricanes. Uh, and Christmas is going to be hard this year. And, and Father, I'm just not feeling the joy, you know? I know I'm supposed to be. Well, that's okay, too. Christian joy isn't about feeling happy all the time. It's not about feeling uh, 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 jumping up and down like Brother Swift every, each and every Sunday. It's okay to cry sometimes. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay to feel lonely. Happiness and joy, as I've said before, are not the same thing. Happiness is a feeling that can come and go. It's like, you know, you get an A on your test over at SJC or a straight A report card. I saw, saw some of those on Facebook this week, and you're just like, yes, happy. Uh, or, you know, you get fired from your job, uh, you lose your one stream of income and you feel sad, depressed, or, or you lose someone who's close to you to death, you feel down and out for a while. Happiness and joy are not the same thing, though. You can have joy through all those things. St. Paul in the beautiful letter to the Philippians says, chapter 4, rejoice always, I say it again, rejoice, have no anxiety at all, the Lord is near. It's one of Paul's themes. And do you know where Paul was when he wrote those words? Do you know what was going on in his life when he is saying, rejoice always, I say it again, rejoice, have no anxiety at all? In prison, bound in chains, persecuted, going through terrible trials and persecutions in his life. It was hardly a happy time, and yet he was filled with joy. Why? Because he says, the Lord is near, have no anxiety at all. Why worry? The great spiritual writer Henry Nouwen, and I've quoted him many times, says, the joy, joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, even death, can take that love away. And even now in this experience of pandemic and, and, and economic stresses and so many setbacks this year, we know sisters and brothers that were unconditionally loved and that nothing, nothing, nothing in this world can take that away from us. 
To be a Christian is to be a person of joy. To be people who do not douse and quench the spirit in our own hearts and in the lives of those around us. To be a Christian is to lift one another up in joy and in love. Often enough, it takes just a single word, a single action, a single text message, a single thank you, a single I love you, a single I'm grateful for you, I'm thinking about you, a single prayer, a single smile is all it takes to bring Christ's love and joy into this world. So in these final days, <laughs> as we're preparing to celebrate Christmas, how do we find a way to do that? To offer that word that uplifts, to rejoice always. I say it again, to rejoice because the Lord is near. And now, as one people of God, let us stand and profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we take a moment in our liturgy to lift up a few prayers and petitions on behalf of our world and our church. For a joyful spirit, that as we recognize the gift of our relationships and the many blessings that God has given us, our hearts may be grateful and our spirits filled with joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom of spirit, that God will free us from selfishness, prejudice, and fear, so that we may be sisters and brothers to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of prayer, that we may recognize how God is communicating with us in every moment and allow our words and deeds to be a response to his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are held captive, whether by economic situations, lack of education, or by addiction, that God will free them and open new opportunities for life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who take care of the sick and the dying, in gratitude for their work and that God will give them the strength they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all, those, for all who are lonely or isolated during this holiday season, that they will find comfort and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth, especially those stuck in violent situations in their homes and neighborhoods, that God will help them hope, healing, and opportunities to dream. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering the effects of flooding and other natural disasters, that they will get the help they need to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to defeat the coronavirus and for all our healthcare workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, 
that God's healing love may renew and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, including the prayers posted on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Yesterday was the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the great patroness of the Americas. So let's ask our good mother Mary to join her prayers with ours as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And sisters and brothers, let us pray together that these our offerings will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and faithful God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mary, mother, longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that as we partake in the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, the lay ministers who guide your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her faithful husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. one family of God, one joyful body of Christ. Let us pray in the words Jesus, our brother, taught us to pray.
Deliver us, dear Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For thine is the ask God for the gift of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I might praise thee forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple announcements, sisters and brothers. Um, first of all, uh, our giving bags. We're uh, continuing to collect donations of non-perishable food, which will be given away on the 23rd of December. Uh, so any non-perishable food you got, drop it by the parish office during work hours, 8.15 to noon or 1 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. We would greatly appreciate that. Secondly, um, uh, we're having a toy drive, um, uh, giving away toys for our young people on Christmas morning. So if you have any used toys that are in good condition, feel free to drop them by at the parish office again any day of the week, and we would be grateful. And I know, I know our kids would too. 
Uh, and then finally, we have calendars on sale. Our diocesan calendars are in. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Anthony. Diocesan calendars, $5 each, can be purchased at the parish office. And um, we're also, our, our um, All Souls all, altar is still here, even midway through December, but we're going to have all the pictures and, and candles and so forth back at the parish this week. So please stop by and see Miss Angie this week uh, and pick up the pictures of your loved one. Um, and then finally, um, we are going to do our birthday and anniversary blessing. I don't think we did it last week. Somebody asked me to do it this week. So um, if you've got a birthday during the month of December or have had a birthday in the month of December, uh, we're going to give you a blessing now. Please extend your hands to the birthday person nearest you or to your TV set or mobile device. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servants who recall today the day of their births and rejoice in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love that they might grow in wisdom, knowledge and grace and enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now anniversaries, any December anniversaries, uh, we'll give you a blessing too. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter into a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed all who are celebrating, all, all who are celebrating their anniversaries today. Look with kindness upon them amid the joys and the struggles of their life you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Happy birthday and ha happy anniversary, December people. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.